Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is non-mechanical energy, and we want to know what is meant by non-mechanical energy, what are examples of non-mechanical energy, and how can we keep track of mechanical and non-mechanical forms of energy. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed mechanical energy. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In that video, we mentioned that mechanical energy is the energy possessed by an object as a result of either its motion or its position or both. All other forms of energy are referred to as non-mechanical energy. So with this definition, we would reason that the three forms of mechanical energy are kinetic energy due to the motion of the object, gravitational potential energy due to the height of the object, and elastic potential energy due to the presence of a compressed or stretched spring. All other, other forms of energy are non-mechanical forms of energy. We'll be discussing them in this video. They include forms of energy like electrical energy, thermal energy, chemical energy, vibrational or sound energy, and light energy. One of your goals in the study of energy is to learn how to keep track of energy. Total mechanical energy is something that we can keep track of. We can keep track of it because we can make measurements of things like mass and height and speeds and calculate the amount of kinetic and potential energy and thus the amount of total mechanical energy. By keeping track of the amount of total mechanical energy, we can predict how energy is changing forms. As an example, consider this truck that is moving with 30,000 joules of kinetic energy. It's on the highway and so has zero joules of potential energy and a total mechanical energy of 30,000 joules. The truck breaks to a stop and thus has zero joules of kinetic energy one stop and because it's on the ground zero joules of potential energy. This truck has lost 30,000 joules of total mechanical energy and we would predict that this energy has gone somewhere because energy is neither created nor destroyed but only changes form. So your goal will be to be able to predict where that energy went. As a second example, consider this sledder on top of a tall hill. It has 2,000 joules of potential energy and 100 joules of kinetic energy for a total amount of mechanical energy of 2,100 joules. It travels into the valley and then up onto a second shorter hill and up on the top of that second hill it has 1,000 joules of potential energy and 500 joules of kinetic energy for a total of 15 1500 joules of total mechanical energy. In the process of going from the first to the second hill, the sledder has lost 600 joules of total mechanical energy, and you would predict that this energy has gone somewhere else into some form of non-mechanical energy. The first form of non-mechanical energy I will discuss is chemical energy. Simply put, chemical energy is the energy stored in food or fuel. The energy that our bodies require to maintain the proper body temperature and to perform daily activity is provided by chemical energy. That is, we eat food, we metabolize it, and we store that energy in our body. We subsequently use the energy in order to maintain biological functions and daily activity. So when you observe a worker pushing a crate up an inclined plane at a constant speed, you know that the crate has gained potential energy. Uh, where did this gain in total mechanical energy come from? It came from the food stored within the worker's body. That chemical energy is used in order for the worker to do work upon the crate. As a second example, consider a car that accelerates from rest to a high speed across a level highway. There's no change in potential energy of the car, but the kinetic energy changes from zero joules to 450,000 joules. Where did that energy come from? It came from the octane gasoline stored in the car's gas tank. That The chemical energy in that octane gasoline is harnessed by a chemical reaction inside the internal combustion engine of the car and converted eventually to the kinetic energy of the car. Thermal energy is the energy possessed by an object that determines the temperature of that object. Thermal energy is associated with the amount of random motion or vibration of the particles within a sample of matter. If the sample of matter consists of a liquid or a gas, the particles are free to move about the container that holds that sample of matter. The higher the amount of thermal energy, the faster that the particles move and the higher the temperature of that sample of matter. For this reason, we sometimes think of a thermometer that measures temperature as being a speedometer that measures the speed with which particles move. 
If the sample of matter is a solid, the particles are fixed into a lo are locked into a fixed position and unable to move about. Instead, they vibrate about their fixed position. The more thermal energy that there is within the sample of matter, the more vigorously they vibrate and the higher the temperature of that sample of matter. Let's review this situation of, the, of a truck with 30,000 joules of kinetic energy and braking to a stop. The truck loses 30,000 joules of mechanical energy in the process of braking. That energy has to show up somewhere, and it shows up in the form of thermal energy. The road, the tires, and the brakes of the truck begin to warm up. That is, the particles within those samples of matter begin to vibrate more vigorously as the kinetic energy is converted into vibrational energy of the particles. <laughs> Vibrational energy is the energy associated with the vibration of objects that would otherwise be at rest. Both thermal energy and vibrational energy are associated with vibrations, but they're quite different because thermal energy involves the vibration of particles within the object, and vibrational energy or sound is the result of the vibration of the object itself. Vibrational energy is often dissipated from an object to the surroundings and resulting in the formation of vibrations within the surrounding air, for instance. We perceive these vibrations as sound. Vibrational energy and thermal energy are are both dissipated forms of energy. That is to say that the once useful forms of energy stored in the object are converted to wasteful forms of energy that can no longer be used and are dispersed about the surroundings. We sometimes observe vibrational energy when objects collide with one another. As an example, consider this car moving with 200,000 joules of kinetic energy along the roadway and approaching a stoplight where a truck is parked waiting for the light to turn green. Unfortunately, the driver is not paying attention, and you know what happens. There is a loud crash as the driver comes to zero joules of kinetic energy. So the driver, or the car, has lost 200,000 joules of kinetic energy during this crash. Where did the energy go to? Well, it resulted in the vibration of the car and the vibration of the truck, and that turned into dissipated energy that we perceived as the sound of a loud crash. Electrical energy is the energy associated with the movement of charge through the closed conducting loop of a circuit. This movement of charge is made possible by the establishment of an electric potential difference or voltage difference across the two ends of the circuit. This difference in electric voltage is often supplied by a dry cell, such as this 1.5 volt dry cell. If a light bulb is connected by wires to the positive and negative end of this dry cell, the dry cell will establish a 1.5 volt difference in electric potential across the input and output of that light bulb. We often rely on other forms of energy in order to establish this difference in electric potential or voltage. For instance, in the case of a dry cell, the chemical energy of the chemical stored in the dry cell is converted to electrical energy and then to some other useful form such as light energy. In the case of our homes, we often plug our devices into an outlet and rely upon an electrical utility company to establish some sort of electric potential difference across the two ends of the device plugged into the outlet. Light energy is the energy carried by light waves from one location to another. We often refer to this energy as radiant energy because the light energy radiates outwards from the source such as the sun, a star, or a light bulb. Like all forms of energy, light energy can often be transformed into other forms of energy. For instance, when the sunlight strikes green vegetable matter on Earth, photosynthesis occurs and that light energy is transformed into chemical potential energy or chemical energy stored in the vegetation. We can subsequently harvest the vegetation, eat it, digest it, and store that light energy as chemical energy inside of our bodies in order to fuel our bodies. The goal of your studies in energy is to develop the ability to keep track of energy, both conceptually and mathematically. Always be on the lookout for what forms of energy exist at a given location and a given moment in time. The situation can get rather complicated at times, as denoted by this diagram of an electric power grid. But with an understanding of mechanical and non-mechanical energy, you can dissect even this diagram pretty quickly. At the generating station, chemical energy is used to produce electrical energy. This electrical energy is then distributed across power lines to homes and businesses. Once it arrives at homes and businesses, the electrical energy is converted to more useful forms 
forms, which would include light energy, sound energy, and thermal energy. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you would find on our website. We've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have two concept builders, both of which help you to keep track of energy, and a tutorial on the top of work and energy. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.